I welcome you all to Bodrum and to the Career Princess Hotel and to our 18th Annual Property and Freedom Society uh, meeting. Uh, every once in a while it is useful to remind people of what the purpose of this society is and has been. Um, many of you have been here before, but there are always a few new ones, so it might be useful to repeat uh, from our um, original founding declaration uh, just what the purpose was. The Property and Freedom Society stands for an uncompromising intellectual radicalism. For justly acquired private property, freedom of contract, freedom of association, which logically implies the right not to, not to associate or to discriminate with, against other people, anyone in its personal and its business relations. And it stands for unconditional free trade. It condemns imperialism and militarism and their fomenters and champions peace. It rejects positivism, relativism, and egalitarianism in any form, whether of outcome or opportunity, and has, it has an outspoken distaste for politics and politicians. <laughs> there you have, have it. I, I trained Eddie for a long time to respond like this. Huh? Now, for almost 20 years now, with the indispensable support and help of my uh, wife, Gülchen, uh, and my collaborator in all of this, um, and with this annual salon, we have tried to promote these libertarian ideas um, and at a minimum to keep these ideas alive. In the course of the years a huge variety of topics um, has, has been discussed at, at this place by a long list of different speakers coming from the most varied uh, intellectual backgrounds. Of course some speeches that were given here were better or more inspiring than others, but that is perfectly normal wherever you go. But looking back over its entire lifespan of this conference, I am, and I think we are, I always include Gush, and I hope that I am allowed to include her, we are also proud to say that, that the Property and Freedom Society has quite an impressive intellectual track record to show for in these almost 20 years. Yet throughout all of its thematic variety, the PFS has always remained steadfast in its commitment to a hardcore Austro-libertarianism in the tradition of Mises and Rothbard. And this, to me at least, appears even more urgent, urgently needed now than at our beginning, as we are speedily descending into some sort of totalitarian democracy. I am, and we are also proud, that the Property and Freedom Society has inspired a few others in Germany and in the United States to follow our example and to copy or imitate what we have done here over the years. But I believe that the Property and Freedom Society was from the very beginning and still is something quite unique. There is nothing quite like it, because it is not just the talks and discussions, but also, in addition, the entire surroundings, the charming atmosphere and intimacy of our salon that makes the Property and Freedom Society a unique experience and a special brand. Remarkably, and this is certainly worthwhile to mention and to stress, through all these years, we, the Property and Freedom Society, have been left alone with our enterprise, completely unmolested from the outside. This would not have been possible 
in many other so-called Western countries, to mention just Germany, for instance. But things have also changed in Turkey. For about the first 10 years of the Property and Freedom Society, Turkey was characterized by an upbeat mood and some general optimism. There was some sort of economic boom going on, average income steadily increased, inflation was moderate, two lira would buy a US dollar, and there was a brain inflow. That is, many successful Turks returned from abroad and came, came back to Turkey. Unfortunately, matters have changed a little bit since then. Uh, there is now some sort of more gloomy atmosphere in Turkey. The economy stagnates, uh, inflation is rampant, um, at about 70% uh, or higher per year. Um, to buy one US dollar, you now need 34 liras. Um, and for foreigners, as you might notice, uh, for travelers, Turkey has turned from a low price destination to a high price destination. This inflation does not only make economic calculation inordinately difficult, if not impossible, but more generally, it has contributed to a highly unpleasant and regrettable demoralization and decivilization among the general public, and it has also immensely complicated and poisoned the employer-employee relationships. And instead of people coming back to Turkey, unfortunately, many bright people are leaving the country. It's a very sad development. But not only the external environment and circumstances have changed, uh, we, the host and the hostess of the salon, have gotten older too. Um, and our mental and physical energy is no longer what it was 20 years ago. There are aches and pains and ailments that did not exist in earlier times. Incidentally, these sorts of problems are also the reason that we are missing two of our regulars. At this time, uh, Tony Daniels, or Theodore Dalrymple, as his pseudonym is, and, uh, uh, Doug, and Doug French. But I guess this is uh, what life is. And despite and notwithstanding all these concerns and problems that have arisen, uh, let's have a few enjoyable days now among friendly souls and uh, have some good laughs or cry out loud in anger at the follies and shenanigans of our rulers or better, the usurpers uh, commandeering us around as long as we are still permitted to do some crying out and laughing about these folks. With that, I end my remarks and only make you aware, please read the letter of instruction that you all have and enlist as soon as possible if you want to participate in the, on the boat trip in order for us to be able to charter the right number of, of boats. And with this, I give the microphone to Sean Gabb, our first speaker. Sean.